Hello everyone and welcome back to Full Recovery. I can't thank you enough for all of the new subscriptions here. I'm overwhelmed by the outpouring of feedback, positive feedback that I've received from the last three episodes. Uh, the part one and part two of Get the Chicken Out of Your Purse, the testimony or the, the day that I spent with Nancy Sherboneau and then the subsequent interview with her and with her daughter, Deb Fredericks. Um, I know that that's been a blessing to many of you and an encouragement. Um, Mrs. Sherboneau has a testimony of getting close to God and allowing his peace to affect her life and her heart every day. And what a challenge to me as a Christian lady, as a wife, as a mom, and, uh, and a, as soon to be grandmother and what an example she is to me. And I'm so glad that you were able to get to know her a little bit. Uh, just a little programming note. Um, this week is the uh, next to last week of the schedule where we'll have two episodes per week. After next week, it will go down to one episode per week and they will air on Fridays. Um, it's getting a little bit more back to normal here. And of course, my day-to-day -day life has um, not changed a whole lot throughout this quarantine, uh, somewhat, um, but, but not maybe as extreme as some people. But uh, I added this as an opportunity to uh, make a difference, be a blessing in some way. And now that things are picking back up with our church schedule and things like that, uh, once a week is going to be what I can do for right now. And so um, I just appreciate so much your willingness to um, go through this process with me as I've been learning about how to do things in the right way. And boy, I have received an education over the last uh, two months, uh, two to three months, and um, I'm learning more and more every time. And I just appreciate your patience and your willingness to watch these as I learn. Uh, it's been a few episodes since I've recommended something to you that has been a help to me, and I wanna do that today. Um, I began a few years ago realizing that when I took notes in a church service or uh, something along those lines that I was usually looking for something in my Bible to write on or a place in my Bible to write a, a thought or a quote. Um, I've had this Bible for a long time. My, my husband gave me this Bible for Christmas a few years ago, um, more like 20 years ago. <laughs> and that's how you know you're getting old when a few years ago or a, a short time of reference could mean anywhere from 20 to 30 years ago. Um, last week could be five or six years ago. Uh, it's, it's funny how your mind plays tricks on you with time, but he gave this Bible to me for Christmas, probably 20, 25 years ago now. And he had written on the front and you can't even see it anymore unless you look closely. I, I want to have it redone, but it says, I love you, Amy, on the front of it. And so this is my most treasured Bible. And I use this for church and, and so, and I love the size of it. Um, and, uh, and it's, it's just been a great Bible. But I realized I was just looking for, you know, places to write things down. And anyway, um, I remembered that when I was a kid, my mom always wrote things down in a black and white composition book. And I don't know if you remember those, they're, they're kind of marbled on top. They still make them. Um, but that was her planner. Uh, everything went into the composition book. Um, of course, my dad was a traveling evangelist, so his schedule was in a composition book. Um, my mom paid the bills at our house, and so that went into a composition book. Everything. And so I thought, you know, I bet they're a similar size to my Bible. So a few years, a uh, couple years after I uh, got this Bible, this size Bible, I 
picked up a composition book and I thought, you know, this is great because it's just about the same size as my Bible and they're thin. And so it's convenient to carry with me or keep with me at church. And so I have a few of, I, I don't even know how many composition books I have now, um, just from taking notes or writing things, things down. But um, these are just a few. And of course you don't have to, uh, green's my favorite color. That's not a secret. But um, they do make the black and white ones or colored ones like this. But, you know, the prints you can find on these now are just beautiful. And it's a pleasure. This is my current one. And it is a pleasure to take notes on these and to be able to keep it with me and with my Bible. And, uh, and so I hope that maybe that's a blessing to you. Probably everybody already has a system of how they keep notes or, or things that they uh, have written down in a church service or notes they've taken or something like that and, and things that are important that they really want to remember. But in case you don't, uh, composition books are a great way to go. They are also great just for Bible study. Um, maybe you prefer a spiral bound that'll open up a little more flat. Um, I've done that um, and I and I like those. Or maybe you prefer some other method. But uh, I, I really love these, especially for uh, taking notes in church. I believe that if I'm listening and in tune with what's been prepared and delivered then behind that pulpit, that there's always going to be something for me to remember from that. And I have books, uh, notebooks on top of notebooks um, from uh, obviously the majority of them from my husband. And, you know, it's funny, those of you who have married preachers, you know, and, and when you're dating, of course, you think the guy is just great. But then I will flip through my Bible or notebooks that I have through the years. And it's amazed me that that young man that I began dating in college, the vast majority of the the wealth of information that I have written down has been from that, that guy, <laughs> that guy that asked me out for that day and I was giddy over. And, uh, and it's, it's a blessing to be able to look back and read these things. And of course, now I have unlimited resources from which to teach or gain information. And I make no secret that, um, Pretty much all I do is stuff that has been given to me by those who invested in me. And uh, my husband has certainly been one of those to invest greatly in me and in my in my life and in my um, learning and my ability to pass it on. So uh, I credit him with an awful lot. Anyway, I hope you will avail yourselves of a notebook like this or some other method that will work for you. It's great to be able to keep track of what you're processing, what you're receiving, um, and then that makes it easier to pass that information on to those whom you influence. Today I want to talk with you for just a few minutes about a subject that should be uh, pertinent to every woman, young woman, teenage girl that happens to listen or watch this video. Um, the Bible has a lot to say about this subject, and if we will take the time to investigate what it says, we will be better off in the long run. Those around us will be uh, much more secure um, in who they are because we are secure in who we are, um, and our behavior will reflect that. And uh, I think so many women use um, crutches to get by in life. In other words, um, well, this is just me. So this is just my personality. I know you're uncomfortable, but this is just me. Do you want me to be phony? Do you want me to be a fake? Um, let me just encourage you to think about something. Um, Jesus Christ, who is our example in all things, was the most real, genuine, and authentic person that has ever lived. And do we one time in scripture find him justifying a bad spirit or bad behavior because this is just my personality and you have to deal with it? No, and of course not. And that's preposterous for me to even say that. Now we are human beings. We do make mistakes, but we should never use our 
uh, personalities, ethnicities, uh, backgrounds. Nothing is good enough to be a crutch for bad behavior. Um, Proverbs chapter 11 verse 22 says, As a jewel of gold in a swine's snout, so is a fair woman, which is without discretion. And that's what I want to talk about just for a few minutes today. This won't be a long video at all, but discretion. Webster's 1828 Dictionary says of discretion, that discernment which enables a person to judge critically of what is correct and proper, united with caution, nice discernment and judgment, directed by circumspection, and primarily regarding one's own conduct. The second definition says liberty or power of acting without other control than one's own judgment as the management of affairs was left to the discretion of the prince. He is left to his own discretion. Um, to surrender at discretion is to surrender without stipulation or terms and commit oneself entirely to the power of the conqueror. But I find it telling uh, that Solomon would use this language as a jewel of gold in a swine snout. So is a fair woman without discretion. You know, Solomon, we get the idea sometimes that Solomon sat around just thinking of profound things to say. But Solomon thought about things in the same way that we do. Circumstances of life unfolded before him. And he said, you know what? That's like, that's like this. Such is the case with a statement like a word fitly spoken. It's like apples of gold and pictures of silver. Somewhere in his palace, he saw a painting of golden apples in a silver frame or uh, saw that somewhere where he was and he thought how fitting that is. And that's like when somebody knows just what to say and when to say it. I would love to know the circumstance that inspired this thought. A jewel of gold in a swine snout. <laughs> um, I think it's, it's funny to get that picture. Um, and then so is a fair woman, which is without discretion. How many fair women do you think Solomon knew who did not have the ability to judge for their own selves an action they should take or a word they should say or not say? I would imagine with the bevy of women that Solomon made available to himself, he came across a few women that had no discretion. Some thoughts about that. Um, it's not about what you're doing with the gold on that pig. It's about trying to change the pig. <laughs> and to put a, a ring of gold in that swine snout, whoever did that or does that, uh, you're not going to change what that pig is. It's still going to be a, a swine, but with a valuable object in its nose. And that's what a fair woman is without discretion. You can paint her all up and dress her all up and, or yourself, if you're, if you're doing that, you can, you can make yourself be so ornamental, but without discretion, you're still giving off swine vibes. <laughs> it's not going to cover up the, uh, the pig that is going on inside of you. Like a fair woman, which is without discretion. It's not about the gold. It's about trying to change the pig. You'll never change the pig with ornamentation. I want to talk about a few things that an accessorized pig and a pretty woman without discretion have in common. <laughs> and um, I think if you really and truly think about 
these statements, you'll find that being beautiful without discretion uh, does not represent you in the way that you want. I, I know for me, it, it does not represent me in the way that I want to be represented. Number one, an accessorized pig and a pretty woman are both a waste of beauty. <laughs> um, I remember when uh, my husband and I were just beginning to date and I remember the first time ever that he told me he thought that I was beautiful. And now you have to understand how I grew up and I won't over dramatize this, but uh, anyone in my family can tell you that I never thought of myself as attractive a day in my life. Um, in fact, I would, as a teenager, I would stand in front of the mirror and some days I would leave for school in the morning crying because I thought, that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> I can't do any more with it. And I was humiliated at the way I looked. And it got so bad that you know, your mom just always thinks you're beautiful, beautiful, no matter what. I mean, it, you know, your mom is always in your corner. You're so beautiful. You're so, you know, building you up, pumping you up. But I remember one day, um, I think that I had just let it overwhelm me to the point that it overwhelmed her. And I remember, you know, leaving for school and I was upset and you know, and she had tried so hard to get me to think that I was beautiful and it just hadn't worked. And so she started a new strategy on this day and she said, look, you have to stop thinking about that. Look at what you're really good at. You can speak well, you're good in school, you're athletic, <laughs> you can sing. Stop thinking about your looks. Just focus on what you can do. And you know, for a little bit there, it made it worse because I was like, great, even my old mom now doesn't think I'm beautiful. And and it really did consume me for a little bit. And I finally got to the place where I really prayed about it. And I said, Lord, I said, I, I'm definitely not one of those vain girls that thinks they're so gorgeous and everybody knows it and they know it. And and I And that would be wrong to be like that. But I said, I really and truly with your help, want to stop thinking about this. I want to stop because it's consuming me. And and that's not right. My my view of my ugliness was consuming me and that's not right either. And I said, God, help me to just see who I am through you and accept it and go on. And that was the beginning of of a change for me. And I realized pretty early on because of that, and I thank the Lord for it to this day, but because of that, I realized, boy, it doesn't, it doesn't matter <laughs> uh, that you're wearing the right thing or have your hair just right or your makeup just right. If the inside of you is not good, is not clean and beautiful, it will reflect on the outside of you. And that day when my husband told me that he thought I was beautiful, I didn't know how to handle that. Um, but it sure felt good to hear it. But I do remember that I ended up walking very far away from him because I just, I couldn't, uh, handle the, the gush. <laughs> and, um, and a little while later, he, you know, tracked me down and, and found me and said, did I say something wrong? And I said, no, but I, I'm going to tell you, I, I believe that as I have gotten older, that it's the hidden men of my heart. The Bible talks about the hidden man of the heart. Let it be your adorning. I believe the hidden men of my heart and that being my husband and my savior, Jesus Christ, who have given me a reason to glow. Um, giving me a reason to shine. Now, do, do I look at myself today and say, yeah, you, you nailed it today? No, because if I let myself think that way, honestly, I would go right back to where I was as a teenager in high school. I would really struggle. But what I do 
believe today is I have an acceptance of who I am and my identity in Christ and my husband adores me. And that has given me a glow. And so I do the best with what I've got. But above all, I try to make sure I'm not perfect at it. I hope you know now by, I think this is episode 32. <laughs> and I hope that you know now by these many episodes, I am not a perfect person. I struggle. But it's God's job to make the inside of me beautiful. And I and I try to have a uh, a walk with him that reflects that. But a, a jewel of gold and a swine snout and a pretty woman without discretion are both a waste of beauty. You don't ever look at that. It doesn't matter how ornamental that ring of gold is and that swine snout. Nobody would ever, ever look at that and say, wow, that's beautiful. Everyone would look at it and say, what on earth is that jewel doing in <laughs> that pig? What a waste. And a beautiful woman, and I believe all women are beautiful. God made us. We are beautiful. But a woman who is more concerned about, I'm beautiful and I know and everybody knows it, or just isn't concerned about having beautiful behavior, and as my mom used to say, pretty is as pretty does, um, people will just look at that and think, what a waste. What a waste of beauty. None of us want to be characterized by that. Next. They serve no practical purpose. That jewel of gold in the pig's nose doesn't serve a purpose for anything. If you really want a, a ring in the pig's nose to lead them about or whatever you need to have a ring in a pig's nose for, you definitely wouldn't use a real piece of gold in there. You would use maybe iron or something like that, not ornamental. It's, it has no practical value, no production value, no practical purpose. And that's how it is with the beautiful woman without discretion. There is no purpose. There is no value. There's no practicality with that. All it is, is an empty dress, an empty face, a waste. None of us want to be known for that. Next, they leave you scratching your head. <laughs> Can you picture Solomon seeing this pig and, and just, you know, this is a man who's obviously wealthy. He is wise. He has asked God for wisdom. And he walks by this pig and he's like, what on earth did they do putting that ring of gold in that pig's nose? I could use that for something. And that's the way it is with a with an attractive woman that cannot judge her own actions, her own words. Have you ever thought about this? If you ever watch news programming, first of all, if you watch uh, even just a few minutes of it, you come to the understanding, and maybe you haven't thought about this before, but I certainly have. You reach an understanding within just a few minutes of watching that they don't put up unattractive people on television to bring you the news. Um, no, they aren't all supermodels and the men aren't all, you know, GQ cover models, but they're attractive people that bring you the news. They are educated. They are intellectual. And at the very least, they've been taught to read well. They can follow a teleprompter. They can follow instructions. And obviously the higher up you go, um, being on primetime news or, or something like that, or having your own new show, you understand that, uh, they are even more educated, uh, or more intellectual, more experienced. 
Could you imagine? I mean, that, that would be the greatest thing in the world to get people to stop watching the news is if they put someone up who could not put two words together. If they didn't have that intellectual capacity to bring you the news, it would be, you would be looking at an attractive person, but there's no substance. There's, there's nothing coming out worth listening to worth investing your time in watching that. And they know something that Christian women don't understand. If you want what you say to have weight, the words have to have substance. The person saying them has to have substance. It can't be just an attractive picture with no depth. I think sometimes we've had that in Christianity and that's maybe one of the reasons we're not affecting the next generation of women like we should. We need to pour twice the amount of time investigated into our inner substance as much as we do our outer substance. In fact, there needs to be a, uh, a pursuit of a spiritual ornamentation on the inside as much as there is to find that new magic product or that new technique. Um, I'm going to turn 50 years old at the end of the summer. You better believe I'm in pursuit of things that will help me to, now I'm never going to look young again. I am not young, but I want products to help me look better and make the most of what I have. I better be in twice the amount of pursuit for the inner person inside me, the inner woman, the spiritual part of me. And that's the only thing that's going to bring value and won't leave people scratching their heads about me next. What do an accessorized pig and a pretty woman without discretion have in common? They both are just trying to disguise the smell. Yes, when you see a pig that has a ring of gold in their nose, the first thing you would say is not, whoo, what is that smell? But you would say, why is that ring of gold in that pig's nose? And that is the way it is with a beautiful woman that doesn't have the ability to govern herself. You just see the obvious, the obvious that doesn't make sense. Social media, I always say that social media is like the devil's advocates carnival. I mean, people are looking, they, they hop on somebody's post and spin around a couple times and then go to the next one, just looking to be obstinate or, or opposite of what somebody's trying to say or do. And I just think, oh my goodness, how many times have people wasted unnecessary time and <laughs> words and not made one ounce of difference at all? I just don't engage in those things. And, um, and that's just the way I do it. But you know, I've seen there, there are people and there are, there are women and there are certain types of women who constantly post the same things and I call them poor me posts. And I'm not sitting in judgment of their need. I, I, I do pray for them and I think, Lord, put somebody in that lady's life who's going to help her, um, put, put somebody in there who's going to encourage her and strengthen her. She's looking for people she doesn't really know. You know, a social media platform is not a place to be validated. And that's what she's looking for. 
and men do it too. Don't get me wrong, but I'm talking to women here. But those poor me posts, they reek, they smell. And a beautiful woman who is constantly, life is unfair. Everybody else's life is good, but mine. I have it so hard. It reeks. Um, I'm going to manipulate people into doing what I want. It reeks. I'm going to gossip and talk about people and, and be critical and negative. It reeks. And to have that beautiful face of makeup and just the right clothes and just the right hairstyle means nothing because you're just trying to disguise the smell. Why not just give it to the Lord who has the ultimate ability to validate you? Next, an accessorized pig and a pretty woman without discretion are both treasures misused. That ring of gold in the pig snout is a waste of gold, a waste of a treasure. And so is a beautiful woman that God created that could have the ability to influence her family and others for the Lord. And yet you can't get past her actions. You can't get past the words, she's a treasure misused. If we would only value ourselves in the light of our salvation, and my husband reminds us often, the way to truly value who you are as a Christian is to go to the cross every day. Don't let a day go by where you don't think about the cross of Jesus Christ and what he suffered for you. Um, the Bible says that we are crucified with him. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. We need to return to that cross every day, reminding ourselves of the great love that the Savior had for us. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been willing to go through all of that for us. What a treasure. What a treasure you are as a child of God. But to be a woman that acts without discretion, you are a treasure misused. Next. They both have in common that they're trying too hard. Trying too hard. You know, uh, the ring of gold is just a distraction. Just pretty, prettying up a pig, decorating a pig. Uh, it's still going to be a pig. It's still going to go to the pen. It's still going to eat from, you know, the, the same slop every other pig does. And that's the same with a beautiful woman that doesn't guard her words, her actions, doesn't think about things before she speaks. What are, what are they trying to cover up? What are you trying to cover up? In those moments when you blast someone, um, years ago here at our church, I was a young pastor's wife and a lady in our church who was the, she had a daughter here in our church, um, thought that I was being unfair to her daughter in some way. And instead of just talking with me about it, <laughs> um, she followed me out to my car on a Sunday night after church and she slapped me. Now, the great thing was, <laughs> the great thing was I didn't slap her back. <laughs> it took all I could do, believe me. But I think it stunned me so uh, much that I just, I really didn't react, which is a blessing from the Lord. Because I, I wasn't thinking, don't react. I just think I was stunned, so I didn't. But so many people were outside after the service that Sunday night and they saw what had happened. And she had meant to make me look like an awful person, but it had the complete opposite effect. I told her I was sorry. She felt the way that she did. 
and I told her that um, she was never going to do that to me again. And I went back in the building. I went to my husband's office and made sure she left before I went back outside. And the truth is, she was a very attractive lady who let her emotions get the better of her and lost control. And when that happens, I thought she was trying so hard to be that picture, perfect, beautiful woman. And that was just an overreaching effort because the inside will always come out. The Bible says out of the, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it. You can't help but act or speak on what you've been stewing about. And a fair woman, a beautiful woman without discretion is trying too hard. Trying too hard on things that don't matter. Your outside will look ugly no matter what you've done to it if you haven't worked on the inside. Next. They have adorned the outside but have neglected the inside. And as we've said a couple of times, just restating it, that pig is still a pig. Doesn't matter if it's a gold, silver ring, platinum, doesn't matter, it's still a pig. And that beautiful woman is an empty shell without working on the inside. If you feel, if you're listening to this, if you're watching this today, and you can honestly evaluate yourself and say, you know, and I look, I've been there where, I mean, you know, I grew up with two older brothers. And so <laughs> there were times where it was like, you know, uh, you got to learn to defend yourself and, you know, your comeback has to be enough to like drop a bomb sometimes, you know, and so, and I'm used to that. Uh, and at any given moment, uh, you know, it's like there's 50 comebacks or comments going on and, and usually just pick and shoot. You have to get to the place where you realize, okay, yeah, just because I can't, am quick enough to come up with it doesn't mean I should let it go out of my mouth. But if you're that person today and you have analyzed yourself and you say, you know what, I think maybe I struggle with that more than I realize. Uh, maybe you have alienated people because of your actions or your words and you can't figure it out. It might be because you are a beautiful woman outside, but no discretion. And it's something that God can help with. He cer most certainly can. Quit trying to always fit, fix the outside. Maybe you need to even take a break from fixing the outside. Now, I'm not saying, you know, go without makeup and walk around in sackcloth and ashes all the time. I would not do that. <laughs> but what I am saying is take a few days to honestly and earnestly evaluate yourself. Is my inside so ugly that nobody can even see how beautiful my outside is anymore? Lastly, what do an accessorized pig and a pretty woman without discretion have in common? They have surrendered influencing for settling. A pig with a ring of gold in her snout does not make her better than any of the other pigs in the pen. In fact, I would imagine that the other pigs in the pen don't even notice she has a ring of gold in her snout. It doesn't really matter to them because she can't lead them to do anything anyway. They're all just pigs. They are led by someone else. 
a woman, a beautiful woman without discretion, has surrendered any influence she might have had to settle in life just being another woman in life who has no influence. Just settling in with everyone else, doing things that don't matter or not having an influence on anyone to make a difference in life. Not helping a younger lady see the value in pursuing a spiritual walk with the Lord. If you are a, a beautiful woman without discretion, it becomes evident to everyone, even a child, even, even children can process there's something about you that isn't ringing true. And when that happens, you have lost the ability to have anyone give value to what you say. You only come across as a fake, a phony, disingenuous, plastic. And it weakens any chance you have, or, or I would say even erases any chance you have to be an influence on someone. And, you know, I've, I've often found it interesting uh, in life to evaluate the links that people will go to to regain an influence once it's lost. In the whole scheme of things in life, I'm really no one of consequence. But in in the circles in which, you know, surround my life, <laughs> I want to be able to have an influence for Christ. Not because I say something is important or crucial or has value, but because When I try and teach or convey a message that God has shown me through his word, I want my life to back that up. I don't expect perfection from myself or anyone else, but there comes a point where it will just be revealed if your life or your walk or your way is not authentic. I don't want anyone to ever be able to hang their hat of walking away from the Lord on the hook of my plasticness, my phoniness. I want to have an influence for Christ. I don't want to settle just being like everybody else. I don't want to be normal. I'll close with this story. The great Prime Minister of England, Margaret Thatcher, from years ago. In fact, this is so funny, but uh, there apparently there is a show, or there used to be a show on where there was a character named Margaret Thatcher. Well, I didn't know this. So I was uh, talking about her at a ladies' meeting a couple of years ago, and I was actually doing a, a split session with some teenagers, and I said, how many of you know the name Margaret Thatcher? Well, almost every hand went up. And I was like, wow, if these girls are in Christian school or they are homeschooled, then these people are doing their jobs. This is amazing. Like almost 100% of hands went up. And I got a chuckle when I began to talk about the Margaret Thatcher that I knew, the uh, Prime Minister of Great Britain, uh, from the 1980s and um, finally I, I noticed some inquisitive looks on the faces of the girls and and I said wait a minute wait a minute are we talking about two different Margaret Thatchers and one of them said yeah she's on this tv show I'm like okay that's not who I'm talking about um, but Margaret Thatcher when she was just a young woman uh, was finding her way um, in the world and 
and uh, and sort of discovering her destiny and 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 her path to greatness and leading Great Britain Great Britain. And um, she made this statement, and she was famous for making it throughout her life. But that quote is, I just want it to have mattered that I lived. I think that there are a lot of Christian women in, in today, in 2020, who don't care about that at all. They just want it to have mattered that they feel good or they look good or they're comfortable or they have a normal life, whatever that is. And I would say to you, if you're a Christian woman watching this today, please don't let your desire be that so you can just be normal. We've had enough of that. We need some women who are willing to be different. Women who are willing to say, uh, by my actions, by my appearance, by my words, by my spiritual walk, by my benevolence, by my kindness, by my pursuit of righteousness, and by my sharing Jesus Christ, I would hope people would think that, no, she's not normal. <laughs> she's different. A jewel of gold in a swine snout is the same as a fair woman who's without discretion. My prayer today is that we'd have a group of women who will turn their back on. I'm just going to be me. Let people deal with it as they will. And if they don't like it, doesn't matter. Um, I think the world needs to see less of me and more of Jesus Christ through me. That is my desire. That is my goal. I want to have the kind of discretion, the kind of reputation, the kind of influence that gives credence to the fact that there, there is a Holy Spirit living inside of me. There is a Savior who died for me. And there is a Heavenly Father who loves me. I hope you feel that way too. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.